When you got a photovoltaic off-grid system, like I do, then you usually got such a device like this installed as well. It is called an inverter, whose job is to take the DC voltage of the system's battery and convert it into an AC voltage that is suitable to power most of your ordinary mains AC voltage appliances. I say most of them because there generally exist two types of inverters. The first type is what I'm using, aka the cheap type, whose output is a so-called modified square wave, which is basically an AC square wave with pauses between their pulses. While this modified square wave does somehow resemble the sinusoidal mains AC voltage, there can be problems if you try to power AC appliances with a triac control, like for example a coffee machine. On the other hand though, the modified square wave works for ohmic loads motors and even transformers. But of course, due to the sharp edges of the voltage in comparison to the sinusoidal voltage, there are a lot more problems with humming. But anyway, what matters is that my inverter works fine when it comes to charging up my boombox, which ironically steps the high voltage down again to charge up two lead acid batteries whose voltage levels we started with. And the other kind of inverter is the expensive kind, which outputs a pure sine wave and thus can be used for all AC appliances. Now I've been getting requests to create an inverter on my own underneath almost every video I posted so far. And honestly speaking, I think it is not a good idea to build an inverter on your own. That is why in this video, for educational purposes only, I will show you how you can create a modified square wave inverter, but also what kind of problems come with such a cheap DIY design. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. From quick turn prototypes to production support, they are for great quality and service. You can test their PCB quality and fast delivery time for only $2 for 10 PCBs. When doing a Google image search for inverter circuits, then you get a ton of variations of pretty much the same circuits. It basically combines an A-stable multivibrator, which creates a square wave, with a transistor push-pull configuration that, like the name implies, pulls and pushes current through a transformer in order to create a changing magnetic flux through its core, which creates a higher square wave voltage on the transformer's output. Not only does this output voltage not feature a pause between its pulses, it also comes with a handful of other problems. But feel free to watch AfroTechMod's video about the subject if you want to learn more. So for my inverter circuits, I had a different idea. I will be using two P-channel and two N-channel MOSFETs in an H-bridge configuration, like it's shown here. If I turn on the top right one and the lower left one, current will flow from right to left. And if I turn on the top left one and the lower right one, current will flow from left to right. That means we created an AC current and voltage at the load in the middle. But of course, we can also turn off all the MOSFETs in order to create the required pause. To complete this H bridge, I added 10 kilo ohm pull up resistors to the P channel MOSFET gates and pull down resistors to the N channel MOSFET gates, so that they normally all stay off. Next, I added 10 ohm gate resistors to limit the gate current, which all connect to different outputs of two TC4427 MOSFET driver ICs. Those will either pull the gates of the MOSFETs high or low, in order to activate slash deactivate the MOSFETs. But keep in mind that the turn on voltage for the P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs is inverted. Last but not least, the inputs of the MOSFET drivers connect to four digital pins of the Arduino, which will later create the precisely timed voltage signals. And after choosing suitable MOSFET types, the prototype schematic was complete, which means it was time to solder all the mentioned components onto a piece of perfboard and connecting them to one another through solder bridges and wires. 
As soon as the MOSFET driver ICs were then inserted, it was time for the programming, which for this circuit was very easy to do. First off, I created three functions that either turn all MOSFETs off, turn two on to create the current flow from left to right, or turn the other two on to create a current flow from right to left. Then all I had to do was to set up the timer 1 of the microcontroller, which starts off by turning all MOSFETs off, and then after 3 milliseconds either activates the high on or low on function, depending on whether the last executed function was high on or low on. After another 7 milliseconds the timer starts over again with the all MOSFETs off function and repeats this cycle endlessly to create the AC voltage control signal. After uploading the codes, I powered solely the 12V side of the circuit, in order to check the gate voltage of the MOSFETs on the oscilloscope, which seemed to be correct. In case you're wondering where I got the information from on how long the pause should be or the pulses, then let me tell you that I simply measured the times of my commercial inverter which hopefully follows standards. To finish off our low voltage inverter, I added a resistive load to the AC output terminal and a 12V DC voltage to the input. And by having a look at the voltage across the resistor, we can observe the modified square wave with a precise frequency of 50Hz and an AC RMS voltage of around 9.77V. This AC RMS voltage value basically creates the same power through the resistor as if we would use the same value as a DC voltage. And since we got an input current of 661 milliamps at the inverter inputs and a current draw of 648 milliamps with a pure DC voltage source at the same level, the efficiency of the inverter is around 80%. Not too shabby. But there's still a problem which can be seen if we connect the loads with more inductive properties, like the transformer we will sooner or later need. The load still powers like usual, but we can see a couple of alarming voltage spikes right when the MOSFETs turn off. The problem is that the collapsing magnetic field of the inductor wants to press a current through the circuit, but all MOSFETs are already closed, which creates the voltage spike. To get rid of that, we can add 4 diodes anti-parallel to the MOSFETs, in order to offer an exit route for the current, which can occur in two different ways. Also, we should add a capacitor as an energy buffer, in which the reflowing electrical energy can be stored. After adding those 5 additional components to the perf board, according to my finalized schematic, this low voltage inverter is basically complete and also works fine with inductive loads. I have to say, when it comes to low voltage AC devices, this circuit is not half bad, even without a feedback circuit. But once I tried to utilize a higher frequency, there appeared another voltage pulse during the pause. The reason for that is that once the MOSFETs all close, current still flows through the diodes, like I described it a minute ago. This time though, the load acts like a voltage source and thus features an inverted voltage drop in comparison to before, where it acted like a load, which explains the inverted voltage pulse. Of course, we could simply short the lower two MOSFETs in order to avoid this voltage pulse and get a perfect modified square wave shape, but that would not be as efficient. So let's see whether the unexpected voltage pulse option is a problem when stepping up the voltage to mains voltage levels. To try that out, I grabbed myself a toroidal transformer from an old Labbench power supply that can convert 230V AC down to 15.5V AC and 8.9V AC. The idea of most DIY inverter circuits I found is simply flipping the energy flow through the transformer, which means that by applying the low voltage AC signal to the secondary side of the transformer, we should get the desired high voltage AC signal on the primary side. So I decreased the AC RMS voltage of my inverter to 8.9V and hooked it up to the fitting secondary side. 
What I immediately noticed was the loud humming of the transformer. Just listen. But this first negative impression did not last it that long. Because my multimeter measured an AC RMS voltage of around 230 volts on the primary. Basically just what we want. The voltage shape on the oscilloscope was also not as terrible as I thought. But still featured voltage peaks of around 450 volts. While the mains voltage peaks are only around 330 volts. Next I hooked up a small 10 watt load to the primary. Which was powered without a problem. And this load also decreased the humming sound significantly. And by measuring the inputs and output currents and voltages, I calculated an efficiency of around 84%. Which once again is not that bad. At this point you might be thinking, great this design works good enough. Which is definitely not the case. Depending on what kind of loads you attach to the transformer, the overall shape and voltage spikes of the primary side's voltage changes. As well as the AC arm as value, since this circuit still features no feedback. It can truly be dangerous to utilize my inverter and generally most DIY inverter circuits with a transformer. So why not forget about the transformer parts, have fun with the low voltage inverter and invest a bit of money into a proper one that offers a lot more safety features. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.